This is Transgender Literature for Children. Hello, my name is Terry Ravenvark, and this is Transgender Literature for Children. What does it mean to be transgender? Transgender people have a gender identity or gender expression that differs from the sex that they were assigned at birth. Some transgender people choose to transition medically, some do not. Can children really identify as transgender? Yes. While it is very normal that children express gender nonconforming behavior, transgender children express gender nonconforming behavior for months or even years. In 2013, the Colorado State Supreme Court ruled that Coy Mathis, a transgender girl, could use the bathroom at her elementary school that aligned with her gender identity. This landmark ruling garnered widespread media attention and sparked a wave of anti-trans bathroom legislation being drafted across the United States. Twelve states in total introduced discriminatory bills that prohibited transgender children, teens, and adults from using the restroom that corresponded with their gender identity. As a result, LGBTQ advocates denounced these bills and called upon the general public in public school systems to better educate themselves regarding transgender and gender-expressive issues. At this point, transgender literature was mostly designated to transgender memoirs and young adult fiction, but that was about to change. In 2015, the very first transgender children's book, George, by Alex Gino, was published by Scholastic Books aimed at children's age 8 to 13 years old. In George, the novel tells the story of Melissa, a fourth grade girl who is struggling to be herself to the rest of the world. The rest of the world sees Melissa as George, a boy. Melissa uses the class play, Charlotte's Web, to show her mom that she is a girl by switching roles with her best friend and playing the part of Charlotte. Upon its publication, it received mostly positive reviews amongst critics and educators, but was still considered highly controversial. It was the fifth most banned book between 2010 and 2015. In 2020, The Hill reported that the American Library Association listed George as the most challenged book in the United States due to its LGBTQ subject matter. Children's books focused on transgender issues utilize a myriad of approaches when attempting to tackle the often intricate conversation of gender identity. These books can be didactic in nature, focusing on the language and experiences used to explain gender diversity, acting as a manual to help children and parents create dialogue about coming out and transgender issues within a safe space. They encourage tolerance and acceptance from the wider public by educating them on these subjects. Some books tackle historical accounts of transgender people whose lives have contributed to society as a whole while others simply provide much-needed entertainment and representation. Language I'm Not a Girl by Maddox Leons and Jessica Verdi Illustrated by Dana Simpson When it snows, Dad and I go outside to play. Honey, put on your jacket, he tells me. I flop down into the snow and make another angel. I'd rather be cold and wet than not be me. There are so many amazing women who have accomplished so many important things. I know girls are really cool. I'm just not one. I've spent all year wishing, but birthday wishes are the most powerful. I close my eyes and feel the warmth from the candles on my face. I wish... Everyone saw the real me. When language puzzles understanding, it is illustration that saves the day. Picture books. Calvin, written by J.R. and Vanessa Ford. Illustrated by Kayla Heron. For as long as I could remember, I knew I was a boy. I draw myself with short hair and a shirt like Papa's. I dream about swim trunks like my dad and my brother wore. I didn't tell my family until the night before our summer trip to Gigi and Papa's. I was scared they wouldn't believe me. 
but I knew it was time to be me. Whenever I had to do something scary, my dad always says, take deep breaths and count down from five. Breathe in. Breathe out. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm not a girl, I told my family. I'm a boy, a boy in my heart and in my brain. Did you notice the language that was employed by Calvin to explain his dilemma to his family? And the author uses another tool to fully express how Calvin is feeling, and that is through illustration. Illustration. Nowhere in children's literature is illustration such a powerful tool to express such complex issues like being transgender. Julian is a Mermaid, written and illustrated by Jessica Love. This is a boy named Julian, and this is his abuela, and those are some mermaids. Julian loves mermaids. Abuela, did you see the mermaids? I saw them, mijo. Abuela, I am also a mermaid. It is illustration that Jessica Love uses to show us Julian's deepest desire. Now that you understand how much language and illustration are important to transgender children's literature, let's take a look at a few genres. Fairy Tales The Royal Heart Written by Gregory Magoon and illustrated by J. Orr I see you are in pain, living silent in your struggle, but you ran away without using your voice. Your parents are beside you in this land. Your heart can be pure and strong and true only when you let it be known. I know I am not able to be king like father. I want them to be proud of me. You will always be their child, my dear. You are meant to share and uphold the values that have allowed this kingdom to flourish for many centuries. Allow your true self to be known, and they will be proud. Thank you, grandmother. I shall return home. Lyric reached out towards her, and she turned back into light. Thy true self be seen, echoed as the light glowed and swirled all around until it softly faded away. Goodbye, sweet child. Now Lyric stood as a beautiful girl dressed in a royal gown. Lyric finally felt free. Tears trickled down her cheeks. This is who I am. This is who I've always been. In my heart, I knew I was not meant to be king. But maybe I can still be a leader. This is the perfect example of how illustration can aid the reader in understanding this fantastical metamorphosis. The astonishing transformation occurs in front of us, with faint light and graceful motion amidst a magical constellation of their former self being transformed into the princess she was always meant to be. The audience understands that this is not simply a change of dress, but a wish granted for her willingness to embrace her truest, most authentic self. Historical Literature for Children The Fighting Infantryman the story of Albert D. J. Cashier, transgender Civil War soldier, written by Rob Sanders, illustrated by Nabi H. Ali. The winds of history blew through America. The winds of change were whirling around Ginny Hodgers, too. Ginny moved west. By the time she arrived in Belvedere, Illinois, and started working as a farmhand, Ginny had a new name and a new identity. 
Albert DJ Cashier. If using your critical eye, you will notice that Ginny is disappearing into the distance, and it is Albert who takes front and center stage. As the book progresses, Silver War breaks out in the United States, and Albert feels a duty to fight for the Union Army. On August 6, 1862, like most other men in Boone County, Illinois, Albert was ready to enlist in the Union Army. He was 19 years old. It wouldn't be easy. It wouldn't be safe. But Albert made a choice. He answered questions in his thick Irish brogue. He signed his name with an X. But there was more to enlisting than signing your name. Each volunteer had to pass a physical examination. Albert was five feet, three inches tall. Maybe his height wouldn't matter. He was one of the smallest volunteers. Maybe his size wouldn't matter. He was strong and healthy. Maybe, just maybe, that's all that would matter. Due to an injury later in life, Albert's sex assigned at birth is revealed. As Albert's news spreads, the government halts all aid that is due to him because of his service in the Civil War. Albert had no idea that his army comrades were fighting a new battle. A battle for him. They testified on his behalf. They wrote letters. They fought for Albert to be treated with respect and to receive his pension. Then, on February 10th, 1915, the army declared, The evidence in this case shown beyond any doubt that the pensioner is the person who rendered the service. Identity may be accepted. Finally, Albert and his soldier comrades could breathe easy. They could relax. The government agreed. Albert was who he always said he was. Eight months later, on October 10th, 1915, at the age of 72, Albert passed away. Stories of transgender people is so important for public education, and even more so for transgender children who are looking for representation. Biography I Am Jazz by Jessica Herthel and Jazz Jennings Pictures by Sheila McNicholas Sometimes my parents let me wear my sister's dresses around the house, but whenever we went out, I had to put on my boy clothes again. This made me mad. Still, I never gave up trying to convince them. Pretending I was a boy felt like telling a lie. Then one amazing day, everything changed. Mom and Dad took me to meet a new doctor who asked me lots and lots of questions. Afterward, the doctor spoke to my parents and I heard the word transgender for the very first time. At bedtime, my parents both hugged me and said, We understand now. Be who you are. We love you no matter what. This made me smile and smile and smile. In the biography I Am Jazz, you begin to see the real-life struggles and worries that transgender children face. But you also see how they can flourish when they have the love and support of their family and friends. Middle Grade Literature Too Bright to See by Kyle Lukoff Usually my dreams are single moments. Weird flashes that I barely remember in the morning. But this felt like I was really sitting at the table. And now that I'm awake, I remember feeling like there was someone in there with me. I, I have to get my mind off this. So I swing my legs over the side of my bed, sit up, and choke back a scream. My room is a mess. The drawers have been pulled completely out of their sockets. The contents strewn all over the floor. The doors to my closet yawn open, my clothes pulled off the hangers and flung around the room, my bedside lamp lying on its side, the upended bookshelf. My brain turns over every possible explanation. Burglars looking for something? There's nothing that they would want in my room. And I would have heard them do this. Did I do this in my sleep? A ghost? But ghosts don't do this kind of thing. At least, 
they never have before. Too Bright to See is a deeply empathetic exploration of grief, friendship, and gender identity, all amalgamated within a curiously spooky ghost story. Young Adult Literature If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo She was worried about you, he said. She said you weren't safe where you were living. Did she tell you about what happened sophomore year when I was in the hospital? His knuckles whitened on the steering wheel. He stared ahead silently as we passed an old brick building with a tarnished steeple. The sign read, New Hope Baptist Church. A Walmart loomed behind it. We can talk about that later. He adjusted his glasses and sighed. The lines in his skin seemed to deepen. I wonder how he had aged so much in six years, but then I remembered how much I had changed too. Sorry, I said. I shouldn't have brought it up. I watched the patchwork tobacco farms roll by. It's just, you never called or wrote. Wasn't sure what I could say, he said. It's been hard coming to terms with everything. Have you come to terms now that you've seen me? Give me time, kiddo. His lips puckered as they formed the last word, so unusually informal for him. I guess I'm just old-fashioned. Tackles more adult themes not necessarily suitable for middle-grade students. The protagonist, Amanda, has just moved to a new state and is starting a new school. This move was due to a horrifying transphobic attack. So Amanda has agreed that she needs a new start where no one knows that she's transgender. Assault, bullying, sexual desires, acceptance, love, and all the complexities associated with growing up reflect the real-life issues young transgender teens face. And that's it. If you would like more suggestions for transgender children's literature, stick around after this. Bye. Want to learn more about transgender history? Check out Stonewall, a building, an uprising, a revolution, written by Rob Sanders and illustrated by Jamie Kristoff, which tells the true story of the events that led to the Stonewall riots in Greenwich Village, New York City, and birthed the beginning of the modern-day LGBTQ rights movement. Or pick up Sylvia and Marsha Start a Revolution, written by Joy Michael Ellison and illustrated by Tashika Silver. Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson were two trans and gender variant activists that are credited for uniting the New York City trans community in the 1960s and 1970s. Interested in more middle grade literature? Be sure to check out Furring Finch by Jenny Rorby. When her father leaves her and her mother passes away soon afterward, Finch can't help but feeling abandoned. Now she's stuck living with her stepfather and his new wife. They're mostly nice, but they don't believe the one true thing Finch knows about herself. That she's a girl, even though she was born in a boy's body. Or check out Gracefully Grayson by Amy Polonsky, which focuses on a 12-year-old boy grappling with gender identity all the while navigating middle school life and pressures at home. Or perhaps you'd prefer a graphic novel. The Deep and Dark Blue, written and illustrated by Nikki Smith, tells the story of identical twins Grace, a transgender girl, and Hawk, a cisgender boy, who have to flee from their home when their cousin stages a coup on the kingdom and kills the rest of their family. Interested in more young adult fiction? Check out Dreadnought by April Daniels. This novel is about Danny Tozer, a 15-year-old trans girl. After a series of unfortunate events, Danny is gifted the powers of the all-powerful superhero Dreadnought. Care for something a bit more emotional? Be sure to read I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. The story is about Ben picking up their life in a new school, making new friends, rekindling their relationship with their sister, trying to let go of their parents, coming to terms with their identity, and even falling in love. I highly recommend Felix Ever After 
by Kaysen Callender. Story is narrated by a black trans teen as he grapples with identity and self-discovery while falling in love for the first time. Care for fantasy sci-fi escapism? Make sure to check out Pet by A Quickie Amazie tells the story of a trans girl who knows that evil is lurking, even with her utopian society sees only angels.